Everybody say head, heart, hand. Okay, now let's see. Jeremiah 31, verse, in verse 3. The Lord appeared to us in the past saying, I have loved you with an everlasting love. I have drawn you with loving kindness. NIV. In most of the translations, 90% of the translations, it has actually the context of yes. Yes, I have loved you. Ja, ek het jylle lief gehad met die eeuwige liefde. Daarom het ek jylle getrek met goeder tierenheid. And in the context of that expression of yes, we find that a few places in the word, we see even the word that talks about all the promises of God, it is yes and amen. Amen is let it be so. First of all, I want to say when God is thinking about you in his mind, when he looks at you, when he thinks about you, there's a yes. Let's say God has a yes over my life. I want to say when Father, Son, Holy Spirit, when they made Niku, they looked at one another and they said, yes. Hello. They made Franzel, Father, Son, Holy Spirit said, um, yes. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So my brother, my sister, first of all, you need to find yourself in Christ and the yes that God has over your life. First of all, when you start with God, you must know he starts with a yes. Everybody say yes. yes. No, say it more with passion. Yes. yes. Now that's your God over your life. When you come in prayer to him, when you come in worship, you see your father, your dad saying yes. He's going to make that decision. Yes, I have faith in him. Yes, I have loved him. Hello? His thoughts is all about a yes. A yes for you. Not yes for everything we ask, but about you. There's a yes. There's a yes. For all his promises about peace, about that what he has for your life, God says, yes, I just want you to ask me. I want you to ask me according to my will. There is 3,000, 3 million things that you can ask God according to his will, according to this word, and God is so ready to say, yes. If you can learn and understand, if I can learn and understand how to pray according to his word, according to his will. Amen. With his head. With his mind, there's a yes. Secondly, with his heart. Yes, I have loved you with an everlasting love. His love will never change for you. His passion for you is for eternity, eternity, eternity. I have loved you with an everlasting love. I have loved you. The emotion that I have in my heart cannot change. It is there forever. Hello? Hello? In the fullness of his heart, he cannot but be himself. God is love. He's driven by himself. When he decided to forgive, he was driven by himself. Hello? And if you can understand that and find yourself in him, excellent it will be. Amen. His heart is so full of love. Yes. In his thoughts about you. Love that can never change in his heart about you. Therefore he has drawn you. His hand. His hand is always out there. To draw you closer, closer to him. So that it will be more of him. Less of yourself. Less of that what is flesh. But that you will find yourself in him. And find him in you. Hello. His hand is always there to draw you. Therefore, I have drawn you with my loving kindness. That loving kindness has to do with hospitality. You will always be welcome. When God takes you by the hand, it's because you're welcome with Him. Are you with me? His head, His heart, His hand. It's a yes. It's love. It's a drawing to Him with His hospitality. Say, friendlicate, like his loving kindness. Kindness. Amen. Are you with me? A second verse that I want to put out there. 
verse 21. Set up road signs. Put up guideposts. Take notes of the highway, the road that you take. Return, return. What am I saying? My brother, my sister, you need to set up the right, the right road signs. You can go in your life, you can go 80 kilometers an hour, and it's out of performance, you want to be safe. But you're afraid this could happen. You're afraid that could happen. And you go 80 kilometers an hour where it's 120 in its Namibia. It's for the next 300 kilometers. It's just going like this. And you get to your destination. Yeah. And the other guy that went for 120, he got to the destination back two with two total different experiences. Then you go on. We see the pass in English. The pass. Not the pass. The pass. The pass up the pass and down the pass. And it says 80 kilometers an hour. Now, okay, go 120 because you're not under the law. And let's see how the road can be at 120. <clears throat> let's see if you are still married when you get there. Hello. And we don't understand. Why did God not protect me? Why did God not protect me? He gave you road signs. But you must put it out there. He's not going to do it. The word says work out your salvation. That means in your spirit. You have all the patterns. In your spirit. You have all the road signs for the right places. But you need to ask Holy Spirit. Where to put what road signs? Ahead. And you put it there with prayer. You put it there with what you speak. Hello? You put it there with your faith. You put it there in the wisdom of God. In when you bring the planning, your strategies before the Lord. And you ask him what must happen. And then the enemy comes. And you have the right destiny. You have you are so 100% correct about your destiny and the prophetic words, but your timing, the signposts, the road signs, sorry, the road signs of where, what must happen as you move towards, as you move towards. And you think, I must do that this year. I must get up to there. But that is not where God wants you in this one year. You will not be able to make it halfway. No petrol. No petrol. And God, I wasted this year and I couldn't do what you asked me. He didn't ask you to go 2,000 kilometers with that tank of petrol. The right direction, yes. Cairo, you must go to Cairo. But God never asked you to do that within three days. Hello? And that's why the devil wants to discourage you. Or he wants everything to happen now. So Jesus and the devil, the last temptation that he can give him, that he, that he throws at him when he was tempted in the desert, is show him, show him the destiny that the Father has for him. So he comes with a word. He comes with a word and says, the kingdoms, there's the kingdoms. You came to have the kingdoms. I give to you the kingdoms. Let's take shortcut. Hello. <laughs> give to you the kingdoms. Just focus on me for a moment. More than on the Father. What do we call that? Worship. Worship is where with a song and with what you do, you learn how to focus on God more than on anything else. So when we come together, we practice with a song. We practice in your time with God. You're, you practice with, when, when you have time with the word. To focus on him more than on anything else. So that in a worship lifestyle, tomorrow where you work, you will understand how to focus on him more than on anything else. Not a super spiritual work. Not a super spiritual life. Cloud nine, that's the religion. Because God is very, 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 very practical. So he will 
show you where to go, what to do, when to do. But you must work it out with Holy Spirit. We are called co-workers with Christ. Amen? 2 Corinthians 6, verse 1. We are co-workers with Christ in our work. We must do it with him. But you know, co-workers, first of all, in the work that God wants to do in us. So, you need to work with God for what needs to happen in your soul. Your spirit saved. We're talking about 2 Corinthians 5. You're a new creation. Everything is made new. There's a song about new creation. I'm a new creation. I'm a brand new man. All things have passed away. It doesn't look like that, doesn't feel like that, when, but that's in my soul. But with my spirit, everything is new. Everything is perfect. Perfection lives in your spirit. But you need to work out your salvation that's in your spirit. You must work it out in your emotions, in your thought patterns, in your dreams, in your strategies, in the thing about your past, your hurts, your disappointments, your successes. In all of that, you need to work it out. And it will not just flow out. It will be a job. You have a job, and that job needs to be done. So you can have an offense with somebody. You can have an issue with someone. You can have an opinion about someone. You need to work out the salvation that you are free to believe what God believes about that person. You need to work out the freedom in here to have the opinion about Franzel, what God has about Franzel. You have the honor to believe. Hello? about Tristan, about Titan, what God is saying about them. You have the privilege to know what God is saying about them in spite of what you experience with them. But you decide if you want to walk into that freedom. Work out your salvation with fear and trembling. Fear and trembling with respect for what God has done for you through his word in your spirit. Amen. Are you with me? Set up the road signs. Put up the guide posts. Take note of the highway. Take note of the opportunities God is giving you. Oh yeah, there's a highway to hell. I know about that, something like that. And um, we talk in the New Testament, Jesus says we must go on the narrow road. Is that the one? Narrow road. Yes, that context is with no compromise. There must be no compromise in our lives. We must focus ourselves on God and go full out in that way. But here in the highway, it talks about there's such a lot of opportunities God is bringing your way. If you can see this highway of opportunity, if you are led by the Spirit with a yoke that is easy, the burden that is light, ah, oh, God help me, God help you, in Jesus' name then they will be able to see all the opportunities God has for you. But you will destroy yourself on that highway if you don't put up the signposts. Hello? Road signs, it must be there. You need to know from Holy Spirit. When, what? You with me? The last one. Jeremiah 31, verse 33. This is the covenant I will make with the people of Israel after this time, declares the Lord. I will put my laws in their minds and write it on their hearts. I will be their God and they will be my people. I will be their God, they will be my people. Head, heart, hand. There we go again. With the head, what will I do? I will write my thoughts in their thoughts. They will have my thoughts. They will think the way that I think. In this covenant, in this eternal relationship. First thing, I want them to think the way that I'm thinking. That is the word of God. First of all, you to make, need to make sure that this is in here. You must memorize, and you say, uh, 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 but it doesn't work in any case for me at this stage, you know? 
when you uh, learn for your license, uh, your driver's license, you learn all the thing, these stuff about the road signs and what to do. But it doesn't work for me. I didn't experience it. No, you didn't experience it because you didn't go and drive. You were not in that situation yet where you stop at the hill. And how must you, what must you do then? How you stop at the hill and, and do a, what do you call that? The reverse parking. But it doesn't speak to me. I never experienced it. So I throw that principle away. That will be very stupidious. Hey, are you with me? We don't do it then. Now, why do we do it with a word? Only when I'm first, I must first be in the crisis. I must first be in the situation. So then you are uphill. And now you, you must be careful. You're going to go down. Now, where is the manual? Let me just take time. Close my eyes and I will open my eyes, look in the manual, study what am I supposed to do, Lord? And then you study how to do reverse parking and, 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 and you, you picture it and you remember it with your mind. You even memorize how to do it. And now you try it for the first time. Ridiculous. But not one of us, I know. We need the word before the time. For situations that we don't even know that is coming our way. That a lot of situations we don't have to get into if we just know before the time how to do it. When you're studying to get your license. License to live. This is your license how to live life. License how to live life. Okay, that works for me. Are you with me? Study the li your, for your license. Let it be so in Jesus' name. First of all, in this covenant. And covenant is the place of safety for a relationship. Just hear me out with that. You have relationship. And in relationship, you know, sometimes it can be this, it can be that, it can be so. You know, husband and wife or brother and brother. You are in certain covenant with, with brothers and sisters. And it can, but the relationship can be like this. But because of the covenant, it is fixed. In the relationship, you can make mistakes, and through the blood of Christ, forgiveness can flow. But covenant is set on what Christ has, did on the, has done on the cross. It's set. It's not shakable. It's unshakable. Your covenant with God is unshakable. Are you with me? But for you to have accurate relationship and that everything is not horrific in the relationship in the context of covenant you are still going to heaven even though the relationship with God and the people and yourself going like this but it doesn't have to be like that that's not God's plan for you on earth to have the relationship like this in the context of his grace in the covenant it can be much more like this in your walk with him hello but what you need is not for the enemy. Miku, can you come and stand here, please, if it's possible? So God says, in this covenant, I'm going to write my laws. I'm going to write my laws in here. You're going to think what I'm thinking. You're going to have my thoughts. So that you will get excited about what I'm excited about. So that you can see what I'm seeing. So that you can say what I'm saying. So that you can hear what I'm hearing. Therefore, this is what I'm going to do. But you know the enemy from the other side also. You can decide. Whoever wants to write any rubbish on me, I'm open. Double-minded. Double-minded. He's not talking about the two sides of the brain. <laughs> it's about a certain way of thinking. And rejection can write. You are actually not going to make it. Stress is writing. Fear is writing. Negativity is writing. Depression is writing. They want to write whatever they want. But praise God for the blood of Christ that can wipe it out. But you can decide to allow all those rubbish to write on you. And not take time with the word. Not take time in prayer. So that God can write his laws on your mind. No time with the word. No time in prayer. Okay. God's not going to force you. He's not going to force his laws into your mind. The devil will. 
That spirit of lust, that spirit of self-justification, and what chamor. You will not even ask them. You will not spend time with them, first of all. But they will do it if you don't understand how to have time with God. You don't allow the light in you. Darkness will automatically be there. It's not like, I don't choose the light, now darkness is waiting, that you will invite him in. <laughs> he will be there. If you don't put on the light, darkness will be there. Finish. Are you with me? So my brother, my sister, God says, this is the first thing I want to write today. Thank you. Ah, uh, sorry, 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 sorry. And the second one. Let me rather do the whole thing now. I will write it in their hearts. I will write, they will have the same passion. They will be driven in the same thing. Like the word says, he said in his heart. He said in his heart. You will put your heart in the words. Whatever we're going to do together, you will put your heart in it. I've placed my heart in it, God says. I've given my son from the bosom of the father. He came. And he put his heart in everything he had. So in this covenant, you will put your heart in it. But I will show you with my principles how to put your heart in it. Where you cannot flirt with other stuff and put your heart wherever you want. No. Our hearts will be connected. Hello? And then he says, if you, after he put your, his laws in your heart, his principles, he, his thought patterns in your thoughts, then he says, with his hand. With head, heart, hand. Okay, now you will be my people and I will be your God. This is how we will present ourselves to one another. I will be God, you will be my people. Thank you. Are you with me? And so many times God wants to say, yes, I want to be father. I want you to be child. I want to be the bridegroom. You to be the bride. I want to be the king. You the servant. I want to be the Holy Spirit and you the temple. I, hello? But we say, yes, Lord, here I am. Here I am, Lord. I surrender everything. Yes. But it's not going to work tomorrow. If I don't allow him to put his thoughts here, to put his passion here, that his love as a passion here will drive out all fear. His peace will deal with all anxiety and stress. Hello? His joy will be that strength so that I will have that vuma to carry on, not just get discouraged and I'm just tired and I'm fed up and I'm tired and I'm this and I'm that. There will be this energy coming from inside. But I need God to do this work in my heart and in my mind. You want to see the covenant. You want to see this relationship with God. Allow him to do that. Everybody, head, heart, hand. You have it. I put my laws in your mind. And I'll write it on your hearts. I will be their God and they will be my people. No longer will they teach their neighbor or say to one another, Know the Lord because they will all know me from the least of them to the greatest. You know, when there's certain principles that you know about God and that principles are working in your life, when you can come to one another and you have a testimony about it, it's not you are now first teaching this guy that you know you're supposed to pray. To pray. Now that person understands prayer. You understand prayer. And you come with this testimony. You can just speak to one another with excitement about God and what he is doing. This is what it's saying here. For those really walking in covenant with God. They will get excited about God together. Because they know him. And they're excited about how God manifested in her life. And how he surprised her. But how you are also still standing in faith for certain stuff to happen. Therefore you can count it all joy. When you fall in certain challenges. Because both of you, you know God is going to do a great thing. That's even where in worship we can get excited about God. Amen. Are you with me? And then it says, For I will forgive their wickedness and I will remember their sins no more. I will forgive and I will forget. Everybody say, God forgives and forget. 
Uh, you heard that saying, I can forgive you, but I cannot forget. Okay, that's if you don't understand covenant. That's if you cannot understand the blood of Christ. Now, that doesn't mean clickety-click and everything is done with. No, 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 no. First of all, you must be so full of the word that, you know, when that man did something wrong, God has 300 with his hand. He did 300 things in your life. And now this man comes and he, he messes up in three facets in your life. He's gone. When you think about the 300, the three is gone. Are you with me? If you live according to the revelation of what God has done for you through the cross, if you live according to his principles, you cannot but forgive. Now that's easy to say. God must help me. God must help you. Hello? But if we can come into that place, then I can be even excited about the fact that God has a specific plan for somebody. Even in the politics, somebody can say, oh, they are all corrupt. That's a curse from hell. How can you say that? Did God say to you that they are all corrupt? Rubbish. Because there could be a Daniel. There's a Daniel sent by God. There's a Joseph sent by God that in that place, they believe they must make a difference. What is the word coming forth from your mouth? It will be a word of faith. Amen? It will be a word of faith. So in the covenant, I must see through the blood of Christ what God is going to do. Yesterday has passed. Tomorrow is an opportunity through the blood of Christ. Are you with me? He forgives, forgets. We're talking about head, heart, head. Heart, he forgives from his heart. That means there's genuine Genuine forgiveness. We're talking about heart, that is forgiving. Head, that forget. The head that forget. You take that thought into captivity. And you choose to believe. And you choose to think upon certain things. When you don't get into the word to start to think what God is thinking. You just want to know his will and then to go and do it. That's part of the package. But that's not an ATM situation. Hello. He wants you to have his thought patterns, his way of thinking. That you will think as your father is thinking. Amen? My thoughts and my father's thoughts must be the same. Because that is for lifestyle. That is not just for a fast food or something just to get something and there we go. But I'm going my way. I'm going my way with what he said to me. Yes, I must do according to what he said. But I'm doing it while he is saying to me how to do it. And while we are experiencing life together and doing it together, his voice is alive in me. His voice is not, I open, I hear from him, I close and I carry on. That's no relationship. Are you with me? But for that, I need his thoughts here. I need his word and his principles here in my heart. And then from my heart, I will have the capacity to forgive. But not just to forgive, but to forget. So that I will think about that man the way God thinks about him. And based on that, I will be able to trust again. But just forgiving, ah, there's no trust, ah, that's, that's okay. You can forgive that man for what he has done. You know, he messed up, yeah. He, he just took the bucky and he <laughs> crashed the whole thing. You can forgive him, but <laughs> to get into the forget, certain things must happen. Are you with me? But if you understand how to forget, you can come into the position to trust again. To trust people again. Many people really got hurt in marriages, in situations with, with parents and with family and whoever. Hello? Ask God that he will help you. How? To forgive with your heart and how to forget so that you can see that person the way God sees him. So that the, the essence of love 
the love rejoices in the truth. That you can rejoice in the truth of God's plan for that life, for that man. Hello? That guy that you felt at one stage you want to kill him. You don't want to see him at all. You forgave him. But when you think about him and when you see him, you can be excited that God has an awesome plan for his life. Then you are free. Not necessarily him. But you are really, really free. You've worked out your salvation. When you are saved from whatever people can do to you, right or wrong. Are you with me? God is stretching out his hand to you today. And he's saying, I want to be your God. You be my people. Are you with me? Because the hand was taken away, yes. It was nailed at the cross. With the sin. No agreement can be made. Because it's all sin. Because it's all sin. But look at his hands. Look at his hands. And you will see through the blood of Christ. He took all the blame. So that once again, in a new covenant, God's hand can be there and you can put your hand in his hand. And you have that awesome, awesome eternal honor given by him to put your hand in his hand. Because the father left, left the hand of his son. The son said, why have you forsaken me? He let go of the hand of his son. So that for eternity, he will not let go of your hand. God, come and set us free. I pray for every man, every woman here, that we will understand this truth, Lord. You will never leave us, never forsake us. Thank you for an eternal, eternal love. Even now with communion, Lord, that we will understand what you've done for us on the cross. Father, you nailed your son on the cross. You left him there, Lord. So that forever, 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 you will not let go in my life. 